In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to read in data into R using the read.csv function. And to get started, make sure that you have a .csv file handy that you can practice reading in. In this case, I have my personal data, comma separated values, or .csv file here that I'm going to read in. This is just simply a toy data set here where I have one, two, three, four, and five different variables here, or fields if you'd like to refer to them as that. And then eight different rows of actual data here. And so I'm going to practice reading this particular data file in. So to get started, I need to save this to some folder, and then subsequently I can reference that folder and set that folder as my working directory in R, which makes reading in the data a little simpler. Okay, so in this case, I've already saved, I've already saved this file into my H drive and our workshop folder here, which is where I save a lot of different things. So you can see right here, this is the name of that data file here. In fact, I'm going to click on it here and copy the contents just so I have the exact name of this data file. And as you can see over here, it says comma separated values file, which is where the .csv extension file name comes from. So again, I've just copied the exact name here. I've already saved it into this folder. And the next step is I'm gonna to go to R Studio, and I am going to set my working directory so I can read in those data. So before I get there, I'm gonna clear out my console here and I can go to edit, clear console, or I could simply do, if I'm on a Windows PC, a control L, which would also do the same thing in terms of clearing out the console. You don't need to do this, but I like starting with a blank slate. And on a Mac operating system, you could use Command L to do the same thing. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go to File, New File, and R Script. So File, New File, and R Script. And we open up a new R Script editor window here. The great thing about an R Script editor window is that we can actually get clean code written here with annotations and we don't have to run things directly in our console. And this allows for us to reproduce things by creating a script that we can run in its entirety or just chunks or portions of it as we go along. And you might think of a script as a set of code that you can use to accomplish some type of task or project that you've set out to do. Okay, so as you can see here where my cursor is on the first line of the R script window here, I'm going to use a hashtag annotation here by using the pound sign or the hashtag and just note that we are going to read data into R using the read.csv function, okay? So we're going to be using specifically the read.csv function today from base R, which means we don't need to install a special package or an additional package to access this function. There are other types of functions that we could grab from other packages that would allow us to read in comma separated values or .csv files, but we're gonna focus on the read.csv function here. It's a classic function and it's a good one to learn when you're first starting out in R. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is make a note here and we are going to set the working directory, which again, is just going to be the folder where we saved the data file we're gonna be working from. So in my case, I can remember off the top of my head what my working directory path is, which is the folder at the end of a path where we've saved that data file. And so I'm gonna use the setwd function, all lowercase here. It's from base R, so we don't need an additional package installation in order to run this function. And within the parentheses, if you type in quotation marks, you could directly enter the exact path uh, that you can set as your working directory. And again, this path is where, in my case, it's where you've saved the data file, in this case, a .csv file that you're going to try to read in today. I'm saving that file and I've already saved that file in my H drive and my R workshop folder, which you can see here. I know this off the top of my head, so I can click run here. And as you can see down here in my console, you see blue font, blue text, which is usually a good sign that something ran effectively. You can get confirmation next to my console title here that yes, indeed, I have set my working directory to my H drive, our workshop folder. You will almost certainly have a different drive, a different folder where you're gonna be saving your data files. And so you just need to either remember that off the top of your head, but if it's a long path extension, you can always just do it this way, which is you can go to session, set working directory, and choose directory. So via the dropdown, session, set working directory, and choose directory. And a window will pop open. In my case, it's automatically going here to my 
H drive R workshop folder since I just set that as my working directory, but you could you could peruse a lot around here and find whatever folder it is where you've saved your data file that you're going to be reading in. In this case, I am going to go ahead and open up this R workshop folder here. And as you can see down here in my console, I get the exact same function that I specified earlier. In fact, if I just copy this line here from the command line, and I can delete this just for effect here, and then paste in what I just copied, you'll see it's exactly the same. I can run it from my script. But I do highly recommend that you do it this way. So even if you use the drop down windows and drop down menu here, be sure that you actually set your working directory and copy that into your script. And this just eliminates a step the next time that you open up your RStudio session, you don't have to set your working directory again um, by using drop downs. You'll already have the script here and you can just come in, you could highlight all the code that you have and click run and it will run everything and set that directory in a very straightforward way. And this makes it more transparent where you set your working directory as someone can come through here and read this and see your note here, as well as see the function and the parenthetical argument there. Okay, so now we are ready to read in our data. So we're going to read in the data file, and this is a .csv file, which means that we're going to be using, as I mentioned earlier, we're gonna be using the read.csv function from Basar. Again, that means we don't have to install a special package to access this function because it comes standard with the download of R. So it's just read period CSV or read.csv, all lowercase. That's the name of the function here. Then we have our parentheses, and within our parentheses, we can enter an argument. In this case, if we've already set our working directory, we can simply just set, we can just set as our argument here or enter as our argument, quotation marks, and within those quotation marks, the exact name of that file. Okay, so a little bit earlier on. I went here and I clicked on the exact name of the file, which in this case that I'm illustrating today is personal data with a capital P and a capital D and no space in between those. Just to make sure I get this file name exactly right, I'm gonna copy it and then paste it within the parentheses here and then add that .csv extension here. So make sure that you include after the exact name of your file that .csv extension, which, com which stands for comma separated values. And this just lets the function know that this is in fact a .csv file. Okay, so let's click run here. And so we can see now if we just run the read.csv function with the name of our data file, and this data file again lives within this working directory that we set up here, you'll see that down here in our console, we see all six of those variables and we see all eight of those cases or observations or rows of, of actual data below those variable names here. Okay, so what we've done here is just read in to view the data frame, okay? And we're just viewing it in our console, but we haven't actually assigned this data frame to an object that we could subsequently reference, manipulate and so forth um, it, and uh, um, actually read in that object and assign it to that object in our environment, okay? So we haven't done that yet. So to do that, it's relatively simple, okay? But before we do that, I just wanna point out why R is space sensitive when we're talking about file names here. And so as you can see here, the name of the file is personal data with a capital P and a capital D right there. Watch what happens if I add a space here between personal and data and click run. You'll see down here I get an error message that says cannot open file personal space data.csv no such file or directory. In this case, there's no such file because there is no such file in my working directory folder here, I know this for certain, there's no file called personal space data. There is a file called personal data with no space. And if I just make that correction here, and you can either highlight this whole run or just put your cursor anywhere on the, the line of code that you'd like to run, click run, you'll see that now we've effectively read in the data so we can view it here in our console. But again, as I was mentioning earlier, we haven't actually assigned this data frame to an object that we can subsequently reference in other functions and perform other operations on. To do that, let's put a left-handed arrow to the left of the read.csv function and then come up with a unique name for the object. And you can come up with any name that you'd like to name this data frame object so long as it doesn't begin with a numeral or some special character like a dash, for example. 
And so let's go ahead and just call this personal data, all lowercase here. Okay, so this is personal data, all lowercase. And watch what happens when I run this line of code here. Okay, so now you'll see that we get blue font down here, but we don't actually see our data frame in our console here. Instead, we can see that now we have a new object in our global environment. It happens to have eight observations or cases and five variables, which should sound familiar. So watch what happens if we'd like to view this data frame object. We can simply click on our global environment here on that personal data data frame object we just named, and you can view it here. And in this viewer window, you can sort, you can search, you can filter and so forth if you'd like to do that. This is a very small toy data set, so there's not much need to do that here. But I wanna direct your attention to this. When we clicked on this, what was actually happening behind the scenes is that R was using the view function with a capital view to actually call up this window here. Okay, so I'm gonna close this out so I can show you this. Okay, so if we go down to our console here, and if you just copy this code that I've selected here, which is the view function with a capital view and the data frame name as a sole parenthetical argument, and I'm gonna make a note, view the data frame object in a window, and then I paste this right here. I can do the same thing by clicking here by writing out the function here, which is what I recommend doing. So click run, and it'll pull up that tab automatically here, and you can view it here. This is the data frame object. So I'll close that out. Now, another way of doing this, another way to view your data, and this works out usually pretty fine if you have a smaller data frame, meaning fewer variables, relatively speaking, and fewer rows, relatively speaking, or observations. You can also print directly to your console, which was, we already got a glimpse of what that looks like here. And so we can print the data frame object to the console. And to do so, we can just use the print function from BaseR, which again means we don't need a special package installation to access this function. It's just print all lowercase. And as a sole parenthetical argument, we can just copy the exact name of the object that we assigned our data frame to, which is personal data, all lowercase and then paste it within the parentheses here as the sole parenthetical argument and click run. And you'll see that we get confirmation that we ran that function here with this personal data data frame object as a sole parenthetical argument, and we can view it down here in our console, okay? Now, watch what happens though, if we were to try capitalize the P here in personal. That's not what we named this data frame object up here. So if we capitalize the P in personal and then try to run this function, what you'll see is we get an error in print, object personal data not found. Because as you can see in our global environment here, we have a data frame object called personal data, all lowercase, but we don't have one called personal data with a capital P. R is case and space sensitive. So in order to correct that, we need to make sure that this object name is exactly the same as it's specified here, including the case, whether it's upper or lower case for each of the letters here, okay? So go ahead and click run there, and now it works. Now watch what happens if we do the same thing we did above with the actual file name. If we add a space between personal data and data and click run, unexpected symbol, and that is because you don't want to put spaces in any kind of object name. If you wanna put a space in an object name, one thing that you can do, and so I'm going up here, and again, as I mentioned, anything that comes to the left of the arrow, we can name it whatever we'd like. I'm calling it personal data here because, well, the data file contains personal data. It's kind of a long name. You could shorten it if you'd like. But if you'd like to put a space in, what you do instead is an underscore, typically. So personal underscore data. So let's go ahead and run this. And now you see it actually has created a new data frame object here called personal underscore data. It contains the exact same data eight observations and five variables as the personal data, data frame object that we already assigned earlier. And if I come down here to the print window and I correct this and do personal underscore data, and click run, you'll see that now it appears in our console without any kind of error message. And watch what happens if I go up and adapt our view function here and add in that personal underscore data, the new name of our data frame object, and click run here at the view function, you'll see that window opens up again and it works just fine, okay? So this is important to remember. Um, and if you wanna name a data frame something different, or if you wanna create an object that you can subsequently reference, 
you want to make sure it's unique and it's uniquely named and it differs from any other object that you already have in your data frame. Now, if you, if you um, run this function again here, what we're doing, because we have named this data frame object, this personal underscore data, exactly the same thing as something that already exists in our environment, if we run this line of code again, what it's actually done behind the scenes is it has overwritten the previous version of the personal underscore data data frame object. In this case, it, there's really no effective change because it's the exact same data that we're overwriting it with. But that's something that's important to remember that anytime you assign data to an object, and if that object name has already been taken, it's already in use in your global environment, you're going to overwrite what already exists there, okay? All right, a couple quick things I want to show you to finish up. First, if you want to view just the names of the variables in the data frame, then you can use the names function from base R, which is just names, all lowercase. And if you copy the exact name of your data frame object, which here the new version is personal underscore data, and if I paste that in here and click run, you get just the variable names here, which can be handy if you just need to copy and paste these and put them into subsequent functions or reference them in some way. And the last thing I'm going to do is because we have two of the identical data, uh, we have two data frame objects containing identical data. I'm going to remove one of them, and that's the older name, the personal data here. You don't have to do this, but it's a nice way to clean up your environment here. And so to do so, I'm going to make a note here using the hashtag symbol that I'm going to remove the personal data data frame object, which is the old name. And I can just use the remove function from base R here and type in the exact name of that object here, which is personal data, no space, and all lowercase, and then click run. Okay, now we've cleaned it up a little bit there. All right, so that is how you read data into R using the read.csv function. That's also how you can view the data frame that you've um, assigned, uh, that you can view the object that you've assigned the data frame data to using the view function if you'd like to look at it in a window and sort and filter and things like that, and that's view with a capital V. Or if you just want to view it down to your, your console, if you have a smaller data frame, you can use the print all lowercase function. Uh, and if you just want to view the names of the variables in the data frame, you can use the names function. And if you want to remove any objects from your global environment, you can use the remove function from base R. Now, once you finish up a session like this, it's often a good idea to do a save and save the R script that you've been working on so you can pull it up at a, in another session. And so by default, it'll open up your working directory folder wherever that might be. You can always search somewhere else if you'd like to save the, the R script file, which will be a .R file. As you can see, here's an example of one. And I'm going to just say reading data practice is the name of this data file here, this R script data file, click save. And as soon as it takes a second, there you go. So now you've saved it as a .R file, which is an R script file. It's essentially a fancy text file. And now you can open this up in a new session. And if you were to come in, like watch what happens here. If I close this out, if I sweep away the all the objects here, so our environment's empty. If I close out of this R script here, Clear out the console using a control L, or you could go to edit, clear console there. And then watch what happens if I go to recent files. I'm going to open up that R script file that I just created there, which was reading data practice.r. If I come in here, highlight the whole script, and click run. I can run everything from start to finish. And you'll notice I get an error message here because the last one is I no longer, because I already replaced the personal underscore data in this session. It doesn't know what I'm referencing here when I try to remove that, that object because that object never existed in this session. So I could just go ahead and delete this, save and update this R script file. So takeaway message, if you want to read in data and specifically a .csv file, comma separated values file, use the read.csv function. And I also recommend that you try out the view, the print and the names functions as well. Thank you very much.